The classic Mac Pros, mainly the 2009-12 4.1 and 5.1s, are some super useful devices to have right now. This video will cover why you might want to pick one up, despite them releasing well over a decade ago. Classic Mac Pros have reached an age where they're about as cheap as they're possibly going to get. I came across a 2010 5.1 this time last year on an eBay auction, and with 16GB of RAM, an R9 280X and a 6-core Xeon, the £75 I paid was an absolute steal. Depending on how you spec out your machine, it can still be used for a host of things. Firstly, short-term or long-term storage. Think about your options here, right? You've got four SATA bays where you can slide different drives in and out, which you might use for different things. I have a footage drive, which is a 256 gig 2.5 inch SSD, which I use to move YouTube video footage from this Mac Pro to my MacBook, so I can edit videos on the go. If you think about it though, there's actually six spaces for SATA hard drives in the Mac Pro 5.1. The DVD rewriters occupy two by default, but take those out and you've got a free space for two more. If you were to set up a RAID configuration with a few terabytes of storage, you've got a super safe long-term storage solution for a lot of big files. Let's say family photos and videos, or even films and games you might want to keep for later. Remember, the power supply on the Mac Pro 5.1 is super, super solid. You barely ever hear of these failing. You can also store data onto DVDs with the rewriter, if you did want to use that. Some consider DVDs a more practical and long-lasting way to back up really important files. One last note on storage. With a PCIe adapter, you can use several NVMe drives in the Mac Pro 5.1. PCIe NVMe drives are some of the fastest consumer storage options available. So running whichever OS you daily drive is going to be super smooth with one of these. So people overlook the classic Mac Pros as gaming machines, but one can get a very decent performance in virtually any game of the last 20 years on a 5.1, thanks to how upgradable the graphics are. I run a Radeon RX 6600 XT at the moment, which is between an RTX 2070 and 2080 in performance. There's no CPU bottleneck to speak of here, thanks to the top couple of CPUs available for this machine having 6 cores and clocking in at up to 3.46 GHz which is enough in most games and at most resolutions. It seems so unlikely to use a 13-year-old computer now to play such new games on, but it just works. Windows 10 runs very smoothly through a bootcamp installation, and will continue to for at least the next few years. Getting one of these computers is really a no-brainer if you don't have a PC and would like to get into playing some games. I'd recommend 16 gigs of RAM, an Intel Xeon X5680 or above, and an AMD RX 580 as a minimum spec for playing the latest games. All of which should be buyable for about 150 bucks these days. Next up, we have use as a media machine. Stick a $15 SSD with macOS Mojave onto this thing, get a 1TB hard drive for storing videos you want saved locally, and you've got a long-lasting media device for your household. Next, all you'll need is a big screen and to sign into all your streaming apps online. MacOS is a really nice OS to use for this, as it's pretty light. Tiny compared to Windows, even. You could take the media part of this idea even further by creating your own from this machine. I plug my mic in and record YouTube videos on Audacity, a free recording software, and edit videos on the also free iMovie, both on my Mac Pro 5.1. I'm not going to get into it now, but if you know enough about a topic, there's no reason why you shouldn't create a YouTube channel and earn some extra money by talking about something you love. Whether you're creating or consuming media on your Mac Pro, though, the 5.1 is able to run macOS up to Sonoma using easy-to-work patch tools. Considering that's a 2023 operating system, you're going to have at least a couple more years of the latest security support, just on that one OS. Okay, last use for the Mac Pro 5.1 on the list. This makes more sense if you have one already and don't have a use for it yourself. Give one to someone in need of a computer who might not be the most able with technology. Macs are about as easy to use as computers come, and giving, let's say, an older person a computer that's not worth too much is a great way to let them try out using one. Being able to access emails and some websites is something that's hard to live without these days. Web browsing is something the classic Mac Pros will continue to be able to do for at least the next two to four years, I'd say. Since the 4 or 5 comma 1s can run most modern operating systems, make sure whoever you're setting the thing up for has the OS they're more used to installed. So yeah, these computers are likely to run you around 50 smackers if you're lucky today. 
A hundred if you're unlucky or live in a more rural area. Not only will you own a piece of history if you pick one up, but there's a lot of use inside each of them still remaining, I reckon. And for today's video, that's all I've got. Subscribe to find out more about these older Macs, and I'll see you next week.